You are watching Wide Field with Vivian Burchill. Welcome to Whitefield. I'm Vivian Kopsinger Birchall, your host. My guests today are from the Acton Climate Coalition, uh, Mr. James Snyder Grant and uh, Ms. Sargam Noria. Welcome to Whitefield. It's great to be here. Thanks for having us. So what is this Acton Climate Coalition? So the Acton Climate Coalition is a group um, consisting of civic groups, um, offices of state reps, faith communities, and businesses. And I myself am a representative of Sunrise Acton, which is our local hub of the youth-led Sunrise Movement. And so basically we are all endorsing the Acton Climate Declaration, which, Jim, do you want to add anything to that? Um, sure. Um, the, the Climate Emergency Declaration uh, is going to be on the fall special town meeting as a citizen's petition. Uh, we've gathered um, more than enough signatures now. And uh, so very shortly, we'll be filing those with the clerk. And that'll go out in the warrant. That'll go out to all households for a special town meeting in, the, in September of 2020. Many people hear the word climate change, but it's difficult to understand. So in your own words, what is climate change? Thanks, Vivian. That's a great question. Um, so our atmosphere uh, does a great job at letting sunlight in as energy and then letting some energy out, mostly in the form of heat. And what the balance of what energy gets let in and what gets let out determines our, our average temperature here on Earth. And um, so for the for the most part, our atmosphere has been doing a wonderful job, um, but in the last 50 years or so, as we have, uh, humans have continued to add um, carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gas, um, greenhouse gas emissions to the atmosphere, the atmosphere has become a little bit more like a, a thicker blanket. It's holding on to more energy. And the, uh, so average temperatures are beginning to go up. Um, did you want to add anything, Sargam? Um, yeah, I guess I can add that in addition to that, because of the increase in global temperature, um, our ecosystems, which are at a happy medium right now um, in relation to temperature, it's going to shift the balance of everything, which will cause a lot of species, plants and animals to be unable to adapt to the changing temperature which causes a lot of problems. Targum, you're at the high school right now, right? Yeah, I'm at the high school. I'm gonna be a senior this year. So I wanted our viewers to know that there are young people who are concerned about climate and doing something about it. Have you conducted some research that you're basing uh, your advocacy initiatives on, and that is, and if so, what is that research? And again, closely related, is there a climate assessment for Acton or New England? Sure. Well, there's both international answers and local answers. So um, internationally, um, the, the place that is responsible for bringing together the thousands of scientific research papers on climate change is called the International Panel on Climate Change. Um, and that agency issued a report in 2018 that said um, to avoid the absolute worst impacts of climate change, we need to drastically reduce the emissions um, and keep our global average temperature from increasing um, more than one and a half degrees centigrade or 2.7 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so that sets a really strong bar, a really high standard for how quickly we have to deal with emissions. Um, locally, um, the town uh, with the help of the state 
um, convened a municipal vulnerability preparedness study, an MVP study two years ago, that looked at um, the impacts of climate change on Acton itself. And what that assessment determined was that the three most important changes for Acton are the increase in temperatures um, and the increased uh, flooding. There's a, there's a change in the weather patterns with an increase in temperature where you get more flooding, but also more droughts. So the, 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 water, the water, the air can hold more water and then it comes down all at once. Um, and finally, there's an increase in, um, in mosquito-borne and insect-borne diseases. Um, tropical diseases that normally haven't been able to survive up here are gonna be able to have a better time up here. And the fourth factor, which was mentioned in the report, uh, but which is very concerning for me, is the disruption in global supply. Um, so as food gets harder to grow, as there are disruptions elsewhere in the world, Acton's going to be impacted. Um, Sargam, did you have anything to add to that? Um, yeah, I think it's important to note that Jim just mentioned how climate change will affect Acton, and climate change will not affect every part of the world the same. So other places are going to be impacted by other things changing in the climate. And this is a problem because a lot of these places are not contributing to climate change as much as countries like the US are, for example. And so they will also have less resources to handle those changes in the climate. And the result of this is just a lot of suffering. And I think that's just another point about why we have to act right now because by acting right now, we can prevent all of that suffering that is to come, not just here, but like around the world. Well, um, you have met, both of you have talked about the, the variation in the temperatures. And uh, so what has kept our average world temperature relatively stable and what has changed? Okay, the climate is a very complex system because it involves the oceans, um, the, the land mass, the trees, um, and uh, all the living plants which are absorbing carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. Um, and that system has been stable ever since the last ice age, approximately. Uh, we've come, we came out of that ice age and we've, the temperatures have stayed relatively stable. Um, what's changed is that we are burning fossil fuels. So we are extracting oil and gas uh, uh, and coal from the ground and burning them to create energy. And in the process of burning fossil fuels to create energy, um, all, this is one of the major sources for all the extra carbon dioxide that's in the atmosphere that's um, contributing to the uh, greenhouse effect. It's, it's contributing to the global climate worsening. Um, Sargam, do you have something to add to that? Uh, no, I think Jim summed it up perfectly. Well, and in your assessment, um, is there a link between climate change and global health? I'm really passionate about health, public health, so I'd like to learn to hear from you. Um, I think, as I just mentioned, how climate change is going to impact different parts of the world differently. And how countries will not be able to cope with the changes um, as effectively as other countries. And so I think that really highlights how a lot of people will be directly impacted, for example, by rising sea levels or a disappearance of their staple food crop due to droughts. And so that is going to potentially cause a lot of mass suffering, which is a big problem. Jim, any contributions to that? Sure. I think it's important for us to recognize that climate change is already impacting people. Um, there's a, there's uh, some horrible news stories out of Pakistan a couple of years ago as the, as the heat waves have gotten worse and worse. Um, there's this very chilling picture of um, grave diggers working ahead of time, anticipating the, uh, the, the, the large number of deaths from the heat waves that are gonna be coming in and digging these, these, these long, long graves for the people that will not be able to survive. 
humans don't do well when temperatures are more like the inside of an oven. Um, we've seen that in Iraq recently, in the last few weeks, they've had temperatures that they've never seen before, uh, over 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Humans don't do well in that, in that environment. Um, the other thing we've seen already is that um, as, as sea levels have risen, we've seen people flooding out of Bangladesh, which is largely one meter above sea level. Um, we've seen large parts of Syria change from places that can grow crops to essentially deserts. Um, and when we think about all these Syrian refugees who have come out of Syria, it's not just for the political reasons. This started as a health crisis, as a food production crisis. And then just to bring that, uh, this closer to home, but uh, when we look at Acton, since we're, uh, I think you're proposing uh, legislation for Acton, I might be calling it something it's not, <laughs> no, but uh, some kind of action for Acton. Sure, what climate, is climate resolution at town meeting. Oh, right, uh, resolution. So what is the link, if any, between climate change and public health in Acton? and our neighboring towns? Um, there are a lot of uh, diseases that travel with insects that have been kept in check by cold winters. Uh, as, as the winters become less cold and as the, as the summers become warmer, these um, uh, tropical insect-borne diseases are, are becoming more common here. Um, Triple E, West Nile virus, um, even just tick, the tick population. Uh, have all been increasing. Hmm. That's uh, that's something I guess to look out for. Um, and and over the conversation, you have mentioned why we need to act now. Uh, is there anything you you can add to what you've already said uh, about the urgency? Why act now? Yeah. So the reason that we have to act right now is because, as per the 2018 special IPCC report. They mentioned that if we warm, if the global warming temperature warms above 1.5 degrees Celsius, we will reach a dangerous point of no return, which means natural systems and life as we know it will reach, will transform. Um, and so we need to act now because the longer that we wait, the harder it is to take action to prevent this and the, the worse the effects of climate change become. And the IPCC report also mentioned, as Jim mentioned earlier, um, that in order to keep global temperatures below 1.5 degrees Celsius, we need to bring our global emissions to 45% less than our 2010 global emissions, and we need to reach a net zero global missions by 2050. So we do have some timelines and they are fast approaching. And the longer that we wait to take action, it's going to be harder and we're just gonna have worse effects to deal with. And so why are you doing this for Acton? And aren't we just a small town that can't do much? I mean, why are we focusing on Acton as opposed to focusing on the state and federal action? Jim first and then Targum. Well, you're, you're exactly right, Vivian. Um, Acton is a small town. Um, but here's the magic of it, that around the world, uh, 1,500, more than 1,500 towns, cities, states, and countries have declared these kinds of climate emergencies. Um, and they are creating a critical mass of people who are insisting to their state and federal governments that action needs to be taken now. So. Um, in Massachusetts, for example, we've had these kinds of emergency climate declarations in Worcester, in Boston, and Amherst. And if Acton is the next town, I'm sure there are many towns that will follow after us. Sargon, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, um, so the problem of climate change is not going to go away until we deal with it. And so by declaring a climate emergency in Acton, we're letting this issue be something that a lot of people will talk about. And the more that we talk about it, the more that our legislators will hear that this is an important issue that we care about. And the more that people act on it, the more that we will get work done. So really this is the first step 
in jumpstarting our mobilization to act against climate change. Uh, and your resolution is calling on many changes. So won't it be difficult and expensive? And are there upsides to acting uh, too slow to the climate change? And uh, what's actually in that resolution? Sure. Um, so town meeting, um, where this declaration would take place, um, has limited control over the executive action of the, of the, of the government, the town manager and the board of selectmen. Um, what, this, what this is, is, is so it's a non-binding resolution. Okay. It calls on the town to act as quickly as possible to reduce emissions, and it calls on um, households and institutions within Acton to take that same urgent approach. So as Sargam said, it's, it's partly and importantly to launch education uh, and to launch information uh, so that people can understand the urgency of acting and can get access to uh, information about how to act. Um, the, the Acton, let me put it this way, um, there is so much to be done that it is clear that Acton cannot act on its own. Uh, if we are to make the kinds of transitions we need, we're going to need significant support from the state and federal governments to get this done. Um, so part of the other call in the resolution is to call on our elected officials to take the actions that are necessary to get the regulations changed, to get the finances changed, to get, uh, to get everything in place so that we can act as quickly as possible. Um, there are some actions that are simply financially sensible for Acton to take, even without any state and federal support. Like when I think about the, um, the ground source heat pumps, the non-fossil fuel heating systems that have been agreed on for the new twin school and for the new fire station, that was a financial analysis of what made sense. Um, and so there are, there are actions where there are investments that we can make that will save us money in the long run. And there are a lot of households in Acton that can afford those kind of investments. So for those households that can, um, we encourage them to move ahead with um, making changes that reduce their use of fossil fuels now. I have two follow-up questions to that. The first is, if it's non-binding, what, what steps are you going to make uh, take to make sure that they're actually adopted um, by the town? And the second one is, um, I, you have mentioned, and I think Sargam, at the start of uh, this episode, mentioned the the different endorsers of this petition. And um, you have also, Jim, just talked about the need for legislations. And I know, I know that you have some legislators who have endorsed your work. Uh, for the interest, in the interest of those who, who do not know yet, could you just tell us some of the groups that have endorsed your work? Over to you, Jim, and then Sargon. Um, so, um, for example, um, the League of Women Voters, the Discovery Museum, uh, the Church of the Good Shepherd, Congregation Beth Elohim, um, Green Acton, and a lot of businesses as well, like um, Kitchen Outfitters and Idlewild Farms and uh, the Silver Unicorn Bookstore. Um, the list is now up to 30 members long. So um, I encourage people to go to the actonclimatecoalition.org website and uh, look through the list of supporters. And Sargam, do you want to speak to how you're going to encourage uh, the town, given that it's a non-binding resolution, to actually take up the actions, you're, you're the changes that you're proposing? Well, what the declaration is asking of us as residents of the town and of our town officials is to have such a mobilization effort. Um, and I think that generally in Acton, a lot of people care about the issue of climate change. And it's, this is the step in the right direction for the future because it's the only sustainable way. So this declaration is going to be like a jumpstart to getting the climate legislation 
that we need. And that is really the only way that we can proceed to the future. Right, and just uh, as a follow-up, uh, first of all, I'm inspired that as a youth, you are taking charge and leadership in this initiative. Um, thank you for that. So what, what work are you doing with fellow youth to get them behind you and uh, your, your advocacy work? Yeah, so I'm actually one of the co-coordinators of Sunrise Acton, as I mentioned in the beginning. And so what Sunrise Acton is, is that it's a youth, it's our local hub of the Sunrise Movement. And the Sunrise Movement is a youth-led climate organization. And so we typically hold meetings where um, any young person can show up and we take action together. Um, whether it is um, calling legislators or attending the climate strikes in Boston. And so we are basically a group of young people who are, who are fighting passionately for climate action. Well, uh, thank you. And just to follow up with the, the whole mobilization component, I know that you guys have scheduled uh, webinars. Can one of you tell us more about those webinars and how people can participate? Yeah, so um, basically you can sign up on our website, which is actingclimatecoalition.org. Um, if you scroll to the bottom of the website, we have dates listed in August and a few in September. Um, and you can just come and attend and we will update you on the latest climate change news. Or oh, one word to tell our viewers about the work you're doing and what they can do to help. What would you tell them, starting with Jim? We need everyone. Climate change is a big pressing problem that needs action now, and it needs action at all levels, individually, with towns, states, and federal governments. So for people that are, don't know where to start, um, I recommend connecting with one of the organizations that's working with climate change. Learn what you can, come to one of our webinars, and start taking actions. Small actions add up. Yeah, um, kind of echoing that. I know that this is a daunting and overwhelming problem, but it is a problem that isn't going to go away. So the best thing that you can do is get involved so that we have everyone in this fight, which will help us better get over the problem. Well, thank you for the work the both of you are doing uh, toward protecting our environment and taking time off for, of your schedules to share your work with us on Whitefield. Thank and you so much, Vivian, for um, giving us a chance to highlight the work we do. Your, your shows are amazing, and it's an honor to be here. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much for having us on today. You're welcome. It's my pleasure. And to our viewers, Check out Whitefield episodes on Acton TV YouTube page. You can also email me at whitefield.vivian at gmail.com. Thank you for watching Whitefield. Till next time.